Thanks, Richard. So, so I, I'm going to talk about otters. We're going to talk about otters in the urban context, particularly in relation to the bride and the, the otters around University College Cork, which is where I teach. Uh, and Cork University is unique in the world in that it has these very interesting top predators in and around all of its campuses. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to talk a little bit about invasives, as the Pascal mentioned, such as mink, koipu, and rats just as a, to put the otter in context. But I want to share with you an experience I had the first evening of, this, of last month. I was out with Chris and we were surveying for otter shit, otter sprains they're called, <laughs> out at Blackpool. And this is a, an otter underpass just beside the uh, Blackpool shopping centre. And this underpass is really central to what I want to tell you about, about flooding and otters, because it was very wisely put in when they built the, the, the shopping centre. And it saved a lot of otters from being killed on the road, because oddly enough, otters are affected by flooding. And when flooding occurs, they go out in the roads and they get killed. So if you can provide an otter underpass to ameliorate the effect of flooding, that's very helpful. And in the area of Blackpool, of the 11 otters that we've identified using DNA in Cork City, eight of those otters occur in Blackpool. So Blackpool is a heavily used part of Cork City by these urban otters. Anyway, I'm there in that evening. The water is slightly flooded. It's a bit gloomy. I'm trying to take digital photographs of the otter seats, as we call them, because Lenka, a student from the Czech Republic that we're working with, is going to come in the morning to collect DNA from the otter shit. So as I do this, I see what I think is a dog at the end of the just here, and the dog is backing up to give it a shit. And it's not a dog, it's an actual big dog otter, and it's, it's doing a, a dropping on the, on, the, on, the, on the underpass. How are we doing? What? So, sorry. And that's the underpass, as you see it. Those of you who volunteered with us will recognize it's just a, a, a concrete path. These days, they're much more advanced than they come in raft form. And that's the otter seat. That's where otter droppings occur. They, they like to mark either side of it. And that's, it a bit, that's how it looks in the, in the field. So that's central to the whole thing. These underpasses have helped otters survive flooding events in a particular suburb of Cork. And as a consequence of that, there are more otters there than anywhere else. So the question I want to, to address is how safe are Irish ot otters and then go on about aquatic mammals and floods. And in particular, I want to say one or two things about bats and owls. And Tony will be interested about the owl part. And I want to draw your attention. This is a photograph created by Chris Moody, who's down at the back. And it's done by a camera trap. And you see the otter backing up a pyramidal stone and having a crap there. <laughs> and that's brilliant, because nowadays we can put camera traps at these points, and we can photograph the otter in the act of putting the, uh, the, the deposit there, which we can extract DNA from. So the whole thing works very well together. And we're working with WIT using their laboratory to create DNA profiles of the otters. And we have photographs of the individual otters as they do them. And what's fascinating was on Thursday night, the intergovernmental uh, committee on Biodiversity and whatever uh, in, in Paris and uh, had this webcast about the decline in biodiversity. This is one of the most urgent pleas about the decline in species worldwide. And they chose to use an otter as the illustration of this decline in biodiversity. And that's a very logical choice, because the otter is the top predator in freshwater ecosystems. It reflects the quality of the ecosystem and its health. So if there are top predators present, such as in Yellowstone with the reintroduction of wolves, it means the ecosystem is healthy. That means that our rivers, particularly here in Cork City, are healthy because otters are present. And you've also got Chris's photograph of the otter at night. I just want to quote from the, the World the World Wildlife Fund 2018, which is quoted in the Ireland's Biodiversity sectional uh, on climate change ad adaptation plan. And it is that we are the first generation that has a clear picture of the value of nature. And it's intricately linked with human welfare. And the last generation to have an opportunity to prevent the collapse of biodiversity. And that's why they've declared a climate and biodiversity emergency, because the two things are interrelated. And 
Yay! That's great. It's, it's been a, a tremendous achievement, I think, on our behalf. Okay, so let's get, get to the issues. As Pascal said, fresh waters are especially important, and an important part of fresh waters are aquatic mammals, both invasive and native. Both are important, particularly mink and otters. Urbanization is increasing. You heard this morning half the world's population are urban, and that's going to go on and on increasing. Those animals that can't ad adapt to urbanization are going to be doomed. And so therefore, it's interesting that otters can survive urban situations. Floods, what we're talking about here, do put otters at risk. So otters don't immediately swim, particularly otter cubs can get flooded and can get killed during flooding. So th that puts otters at risk, but also flood infrastructure puts otters at risk, much more excessive risk, excessive risk because when they put in culverts to prevent flooding, they're going to affect the otters by cutting off the whole ecosystem, which is what's planned for Blackpool. So, the uh, two aquatic animals I want to talk specifically about. This is an Irish otter, okay? This is a beautiful photograph generated by a guy called Tom Mason. You can actually see its whiskers, it's so good. It was taken by a camera trap on the River Bride, okay? And you can see it. it and this is a Dorbenton's bat. As I said, the Irish otter is a top ecosystem predator. There are no other extent ecosystem top predators left in Ireland. We exterminated the wolf. We've reintroduced eagles. This is the last top predator, so very important, because it provides ecosystem services in keeping prey in check, and it also keeps manners on mink. In the absence of otters, mink get bad, so it keeps them under control. And uh, uh, mink are present right here in the middle of the city. It also disperses some strange and interesting things. For example, they eat blackberries, and they take blackberries to habitats that blackberries wouldn't normally come, come to. It's extraordinary. This is Dora Benton's bat. Pascal mentioned them. They're a very important species because they forage on still water. And as he said, they catch insects in their huge, great feet. They've got these huge, great feet by, by projecting um, uh, uh, noise against the surface of the water. They're, they're the most widespread bat in Europe, and they're particularly common here. And there's reason to believe they are threatened by a very subtle form of climate change, which I'll go on about a little bit. So, threats to the native aquatic mammals. We start with the otter. That's Chris Mason's picture. As I said, Otters are a primary threat to otters. They have to learn to swim, and cubs get swept away. So in 1953, in the winter, out at Ladies Well, which is a brewery near Blackpool, a mother and cubs was wa were washed into the brewery in, in a winter storm. Happily, the brewers were happy to see them, put them back in the water. But we know that cubs are quite regularly killed by flooding. That's a problem. Things get, getting swept away is a problem. We think uh, there's been a decline in rats due to the rats being swept out to sea in winter storms. Now, people don't give a damn about rats, but think about it. Other things are also swept out to sea by storms. For example, those poor unfortunate people in Mozambique and Zimbabwe that were swept out in the re recent cycle. So things be being swept out to sea is probably a huge issue. Um, and hunting, uh, hunting the, the hunters in the past, for example, Arthur Stringer in 1714, wrote that floods probably kill a hell of a lot more otters than, than hunters ever do, and he is quite right. So, in order to illustrate the importance of flooding for Cork's otters, I have to go back to the uh, various surveys we've done over the years. This, these were the years 2003, 2004. My wife was pregnant at the time, so the, the um, uh, uh, maps that we used to generate uh, these, these otter surveys have huge great arrows to the maternity hospital in case I get <laughs> her. And this is the black and white time when we couldn't illustrate things in, 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 in color, so we illustrate it in black and white. And, and these symbols represent various signs of otters. This is the village of Glanmire, which is heavily used, as you'd expect, it's a wooded suburb. This is the Blackpool River and the Bride, which I go on a lot about. And this is the university district here. You're just about here in the city center. And you can see the city center island is heavily used by otters. And if you take the River Bride, we had four signs, uh, sorry, five signs. We'd, we'd um, signs of sprains and we'd, we'd tracks. Okay, so very little use, really, that we recorded. And when you look at the university district, you also get very little use. 
Now, at the time, all we did was we went to the nearest bridge, we searched around the bridge for auto sign, we recorded it, then we stopped. We didn't do the intensive surveys we now do. So we now, we redid intensive surveys, and I'll start with the university. This is the university district. It's not exclusively the university. This is UCC Irish Distillers Campus here, which is where I work. People get a bit confused about the title, the Irish Distillers. They don't know where I work. <laughs> uh, this is the main campus here, OK? And you can see this is the 2003-2004 survey. Those are the signs we found there, represented by these otters with a tail and a shit. And these are sprinting sites here. You can see we found two sprinting sites there. We found 26 in the resurvey. So this part of the city is used intensively by otters. And it will fit very neatly into the university's green campus initiative if they can incorporate better systems to encourage otters right the way across the campus. And that's what will, will happen, I'm happy to say. So that's quite important. You also get otter slides. You get tracks. The city is well used by otters. Uh, it became clear recently that the River Bride was going to be culverted from about here, from Blackpool Shopping Centre to the Opera House. We became uh, concerned about this, so in cooperation with CNN, we did a survey. Prior to that, we'd done a DNA survey of the city's otters. And as I say, of the 11 otters we detected, in 11 individual otters we detected in Cork City, eight occurred in this part of Blackpool, four males and four females. We repeated the survey for one year, and we found all these signs. And you can see these in illustrations here are camera traps, where we put camera traps down to capture the images, which is the images I, I've used previously in this talk. I want you to pay attention to this section here, which is the Blackpool section. This is Blackpool Church. And this is Ladies Well Brewery, where those otters were swept into the brewery in 1953. It's been speculated that they like beer, but I think they were just washed in. <laughs> So, that's, so this is the section I'll be talking about for the, for the next couple of slides. These are our volunteers that came out to help us. That's the otter underpass over there. You can see they're in waders. They're standing on one of those pyramidal rocks that the otter is back up to put a dropping on the top of it. Okay. And these, this, is, this is the results for a year-long intensive survey we did on, after the survey. So we went out in spring. Now, this is a very specific targeted survey. For three days, the otters repeatedly went out in the river. When they came across fresh sprains, they marked them in green. When they came across old sprains, they marked them in gray. And they uh, uploaded them using digital cameras with their smartphones. So the team that took over tomorrow and the next day of the three days would be able to look at what the other team found on the first day. So in the spring, they found four new sprains. These new sprains can be the locations to camera traps. They can equally, we can extract the DNA. This is the summertime, much more activity. You can see loads and loads of fresh sprains on this part of the river. Remember, this is the part of the river that they want to culvert. They want to cover this and turn it into a sewer to prevent, so it would kill the entire ecosystem. So this is the autumn that year. And here again, you can see the still activity here. And this is a Tuppen Hapesney, tiny little river. It's only about three meters across by about one meter at the deepest. So it's easily waded. So there's great potential here. And finally, in the winter, you get three sprains, but you also get what we call goo, which is an exude from their anal scent glands. It's excellent for getting DNA, much better than shit. So, so that's, that's a big prize. So, so we did very well. Oh, is that somebody falling down drunk there? No, it's me collecting a, an auto sprain, <laughs> looking like an old man. There you go. But that, that, that's the kind of atmosphere and the, 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 where the weight is. It's very important that these things are done rigorously, that you write the date and the map coordinates on the sample, and you then send it to WIT. Some of our colleagues in Dublin actually collected auto paint, put it in tubes, and sent it to WIT with no date, no location, no nothing. And funnily enough, they weren't that amused in WIT. That's odd, that, isn't it? So you have to be rigorous about these things. And CNN produced this booklet, which is uh, uh, available outside. You can download it from the internet. It's about those authors. 
And good things happened because of this volunteering. So, for example, Chris got a prize. My son, Richard Seaman, who was born way back in 2003, got to handle a TV camera, which he should never do at, at the age of 15. That's Chris getting his prize. Yay. And that's Richard with the TV camera, which was also very terrifying. And these are the two girls. Girls are not usually impressed by otter shit, but these two are. <laughs> because they work in a DNA lab, and they can tell you the sex and age of the otter using the shit. This is Lenka, who's the lady from the Czech Republic. And that's Denise O'Mara, who couldn't be here today, but she's been working with me now for many years on various DNA projects. And it's, it's very exciting, as Chris will tell you, when you get a picture of the otter, and then you know what age and sex it is. So for example, in the city center, we detected one female otter that had a slight mutation. She had double sex chromosomes. One of the wits in the outfit suggested that she might be very good at the Olympics. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> so what can we anticipate from this work? Well, the first thing is there's going to be a hell of a lot more national and international attention paid to urban otters. Already there are urban otter projects in Korea, in Singapore, um, and in Cape Town. Okay, so that, that's, and as word gets out that we think we've won this one about the River Bride in Cork, people will be interested in urban artists because you'll be able to delay or put off the, the OPW's attempts to culvert rivers. Already in Cork County, we've, uh, three river surveys have been done. The entire catchments has been done. The entire catchments of the River Blackwater has been done by my friend and colleague Pat Smitty in 2018. The Lee and the Bandon have been done. And we can probably do them with two or three techniques. These days, terrifyingly, but very interestingly, you can take a couple of buckets of water out of a river, put it in a lab, and from the eDNA, you can tell how many otters are in the river. <laughs> Terrifying, but, but, but uh, the future coming down the track. So collecting the shit may well be a thing of the past. However, it's very exciting. <laughs> uh, it's also, these otters live mostly in the marine environment. Marine, otters living in marine environments must bathe once a day. Okay, So they have to get to fresh water once a day to bathe. That gives the potential in the city for us to put up pools that otters could bathe in. This is a predictable resource that they could use regularly, probably tidally. So that's a huge opportunity for Cork to capitalize on, on these urban otters, which are extremely rare. And we're just finishing a survey of Dublin. Happily, Dublin hasn't got as many otters as Cork, but there you go. <laughs> they have got otters, and it, it's quite important. They're quite common. So just to recapitulate and to come to some conclusions, urban otters are going to become very important as flooding and anti-flood uh, mechanisms come in. This is the original team that generated those DNA images. That's Shane White there, who's the senior author of the paper. That's Denise there. This is a photo, and that's her husband there, and that's me at a younger time. Um, the Irish otter is a unique top predator. It's a survival of the original Irish ecosystem after the Ice Age. It provides a lot of ecosystem services, and it's under threat both from floods and from flood amelioration works. Otters in general, urban otters in particular, a spectacular opportunities for community conservation and for ce celebrating uh, wildlife. So that, I, particularly here in Cork, I think that's very true. So I'm going to just di divert from otters for a moment and talk a little bit about climate change and Joe Benton's bats and barn owls. Okay, this is this is a bit data that isn't yet fully published. Floods in Ireland appear to make Joe Benton's bats more susceptible to predation by barn owls. Now, normally, owls don't ever predate bats, but barn owls seem to pose a threat to bats in, in this area of climate change. In Britain, Dorbenton's bats are exceptionally rare in barn, as barn owl prey. His colleagues in Britain looked at 225,000 prey items. Okay, They identified that number of items. Of those, 86, 003.8% were bats, and of those, only five 0.0052% were Dobenton's bats. So this is an exceptionally rare prey item. Also, similarly, a, a Swiss researchers looked at 4 million prey remains okay, taken by barn owls. Of those, 1.6% were bats, and only 170.000045% were Dobenton's bats. So Dobenton's bats are exceptionally rarely taken by barn owls, except in Ireland during storms. 
in, with surprise and alarm, the remains of three Barnal, three Dorbentans bats were found in Barnal pellets. That's three percent of the prey during storms in 2008 and 2009. Dorbentans bat is an extremely important part of Irish freshwater ecosystems for various reasons. They're indicators of freshwater and a certain environmental consistency. Uh, certain environmental conditions. If barn owls predate them at this rate, they will go extinct very fast. So that, that's, a, that's quite a big issue. And probably climate change is creating differences in predator-prey relationships like this that we just don't notice. And it's, it's by accident that we notice this. So that's one of the problems. There are also, as, as uh, Pascal said, invasive species. There's the Koipu in County Cork, this huge five or six kilo rodent from South America, which was coming out near the dog track. It's, it's a problem. It's going to get worse. Uh, but they've been killed. There's the brown rat, which is declining. We don't understand why it's declining. It's basically an aquatic animal. We've looked at barn owl uh, remains and uh, barn owl diet, barn owl prey. Brown rats is barn owl prey, and I'll show you the graph in a moment. And mink. Mink are a big problem in Cork City. Those surveys we did at Blackpool and at the University District all showed mink. Mink hidden away, not able to express themselves because of the otters, but nevertheless, there are mink present in the city. They should be removed as a matter of urgency. They're causing declines in, in birds of prey, in, 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 in water birds. This is a, a, a graph we did of the prey of barn owls from the 1960s to 2018. The blue bottom line is rats, and there's, there is a slight downward trend. We think brown rats are getting swept out to sea by these frequent winter storms. They represent a huge amount of diversity, biomass in the Irish ecosystem. They're very important prey. The fact that we don't know why they're declining is a problem. So thanks to uh, Simon uh, Harrison, who was here. That's his Mao Zedong little uh, impression. Of the <laughs> and that's him there. He found a sprinting site four meters from the river, which is, was very significant. And we now look further around the river. And my friend and colleague, Ross Macklin, who uh, helped me with the, with the boat in the university survey. Uh, I've got talks on uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint PDFs, which are illustrated on this reference thing, which is printed out, which you can, you can collect on your way out. I've got re scientific references here, which you can look up. And I've got a book called Irish Wild Animals, the Guide to the Literature, which is on sale, if you wish to, <laughs> at, at the gate. Okay, thank you very much for listening to me.